Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel PharmaWell. In today's video, I will be discussing about depyrogenation tunnel. I will be discussing three important topics in this specific video. First is how hot air achieves the sterilization. What is the principle of depyrogenation tunnel to achieving sterilization? How to select container sizes for the qualification of depyrogenation tunnel? And finally, how to qualify the depyrogenation tunnel and what are the ways and methods, what are the complexities, what are the principles, what is the basic understanding in qualifying the depyrogenation tunnel. So let us first start with hot air as a mechanism of sterilization or depyrogenation. So hot air requires very high temperature and longer duration for the achieving sterilization. Why? Hot air has a very less heat carrying capacity compared to the moist heat or saturated steam. Hot air, because hot air has very less specific heat, so it carries very less heat when heated and, and transfer the heat in very less amount. So it, it requires higher temperature and longer duration when we are achieving, when we are talking hot air sterilization. So in batch sterilizers, which are operating at 250 degrees, it requires sometimes 2 hours or 3 hours of exposure for the achieving sterilization. In depyrogenation tunnels, we are going for the temperature which are more than 300 degrees and it requires around more than 3 minutes inside the tunnel to achieve depyrogenation. So how hot air works, how heat transfer in the hot air depyrogenation works. It is by the principle called convection. So there are convection currents by which heat is transferred. So how it happens inside the tunnel? So tunnel is fitted with heater banks and blower to circulate the air. So what happens in tunnel? The air is circulated through heater bank. So heated heater bank transfers the heat to air and that heated air then transfer the heat to the glass containers, glass wires which are there inside the tunnel conveyor. So in tunnel operation, in, in, in sterile filling operation, what we are doing, we are first washing the wire, then it goes to the tunnel and then it gets heated and gets depyrogenated. So in tunnel how it works, that hot air is transferred, travels to the heater banks, air gets heated it forced through blower towards the wires and through that force convection, force convection currents, the heat is transferred from the heated air to the wires which are comparatively cool inside the tunnel. So this is the principle how the heat is transferred inside the tunnel through convection current. Now how to qualify the tunnel? So this is the working principle of tunnel. There is a blower which circulates the air through the heater bank, heater bank heats the air and it transfers to the containers. Now how we can qualify? So when I have to qualify the tunnel, first I have to see how many containers are there for sterilization or depyrogenation. Practically all coil sizes should be con uh, considered, all the container size should be considered, consider, but in general there are three ways to look at it. First is we have to consider smallest coil size. Second is we have to consider the largest vial size and third will be the in between vial size which have the most dense mass or glass volume, glass weight inside the tunnel. So these are the three factors, smallest vial size, largest vial size and the container size with the most dense mass or most dense volume inside the tunnel. This is how we have to select the container sizes. So once we decide the container size that has to be validated. then how to validate? So we have to use thermocouples for the temperature mapping and how we can do it. So let us first understand what, what are the worst case scenarios in the tunnel, what are the heat distribution problems what, or how we can measure the temperature throughout the conveyor. It is moving conveyor, so how to measure and what is the worst case scenario? So for the tunnel qualification, there are three worst case scenarios. First, 
the the very very first row of the wires which goes inside the tunnel conveyor gets the least amount of heat in i'll tell you why so the air is getting circulated and air has a very specific phenomena that it will travel to the past of least resistance so tunnel conveyor is practically a mess of metal wires stainless steel wires mess and it it easily allows the air flow through that mess and then once wire goes inside wire is a resistance so tunnel tunnel with the wires inside the first wire row of wires going inside the tunnel will create a resistance for the air flow movement so what air will do instead of penetrating inside the wire it will go to the mess which is uh, easy to flow so because of this the first rows of wire which are going inside the tunnel will not get the en enough amount of heat transfer from the heated air to the wires so this first rows i have to measure whether they are getting the enough amount of heat for the required amount of time so this is my first case first worst case inside the tunnel and how i can measure so we have to carefully place the sensor throughout the width of the conveyor so if my conveyor width is 300 mm then from this end to this end maybe 5 maybe 10 sets of wires with sensors inside we i have to put and how i can put it there are two ways one is uh, keep the bunch of wires uh, tied with teflon tape and put sensor inside so this bunch will not allow the sensor to move here and there or will not allow the wire with sensor to topple the second way is to prepare a stainless steel jig with holes inside so we can tie the wires inside the hole with teflon tape and put sensor inside then entire jig can be kept in between so it will travel through the uh, wire mass smoothly without sensor getting toppled without the wire getting toppled or sensor getting pulled and this requires lot of effort and one or more than one people has to be involved in allowing the thermocouple to go inside the tunnel conveyor in a smooth way so how it can be done you have to hold that you have to put the uh, sensors inside the wires allow the wires to pass inside the tunnel conveyor and gradually uh, leave uh, gradually uh, release the thermocouple cable so that it will not get pulled or pushed and it will uh, remain steady at the required place inside the tunnel so this is how i can measure the initial path initial first row whether it is getting temperature or not now what is the next second case second worst case when my entire tunnel is filled my entire hot zone is filled with wires then the entire mass has to be heated by the air so middle of the mass will be my worst case scenario because it is fully loaded and is surrounded by the all the wires so middle of the mass will be my again second worst case because now the entire tunnel is filled and entire heat load entire the glass load has to be heated to achieve the deep hydrogenation temperature what is my third worst case okay again in this middle also we have to place the sensor in same way which we have in the in the manner we have kept in the initial path there to cover the entire width of conveyor now what is my third worst case is my end of wires my when my last row of wire is going inside the tunnel my, when my entire washing machine operation is completed my last row is going inside then that end row is my worst case because of the same reason because now my tunnel uh, conveyor is getting emptied so air will flow toward the conveyor mess rather than going inside the wire and it will pose this uh, challenge that it will not get enough heat exposure so end of my tunnel will be again third worst case in terms of proper heat exposure so in normal scenario now how how to achieve or how to apply the parameters so i have to for the tunnel sterilization qualification we have to select worst case scenario in terms of temperature and time for example if my routine temperature for the tunnel will be 320 degrees then i have to qualify it at 310 degrees which is 10 degrees celsius lesser than the my set temperature which will be for the routine operation this is not a standard company to company it can be vary how much less you are going to use but it is good practice or desirable that we should qualify at a lesser temperature than what we are going for actual operation 
and coming to the conveyor speed i have to increase the conveyor speed by 5% again 5% is not standard but it is normally accepted practice that we will be qualifying at 5% higher speed than what i am going for the routine operation so if my tunnel conveyor speed is 100 mm per minute in routine and and my temperature is 320 degree in routine then my qualification criteria will be 310 degree and 105 degree 105 mm per minute which is 5 mm higher than the my routine operations if i qualified this worst case parameter then it it justifies my fluctuation which can occur during the routine production for example in routine production if sometimes temperature goes to towards 350 against a stat point of 320 degree because of tunnel heater malfunction or some fluctuation on off or not enough voltage there are many reasons that tunnel temperature can fluctuate or some of the portion or during the entire course of filling at certain period of time temperature can go lower than the 320 degree which is set temperature then through my validation i can justify that okay i have 350 degree in routine but i have validated at 310 degrees so it makes sense that it it the, the, my wires will get sterilized or deparaginated same way if there is tunnel uh, conveyor fluctuation for example at the set point of 100 is goes up to 102 mm then we can say that i have validated at 105 mm per minute so this is justified through my validation data of course this fluctuation we have to investigate it or in the routine and if there are a lot of fluctuation then we have to look at it what is the reason and we have to rectify those reasons but through such qualification we can have a backup data so that there will be no question on the sterility assurance of the product so hope this small video will be helpful for you to understanding overall tunnel operation so tunnel it works on hot air principle through convection current heat is transferred while selecting the container size we have to consider minimum minimum size maximum size and the size with the most dense mass of glass and for the validations we have to consider initial middle and end of the tunnel as well as we have to validate on the worst case parameters of time and temperature so hope this small video will be helpful for you to understand very basic of uh, tunnel qualification if you like my video you can subscribe to my channel farmaven and also share to your friends to spread the knowledge help me spread the knowledge thank you thank you very much for watching my full video